Hyundai Santa Fe probably won't be the first car you think of if you're looking for an affordable yet family-sized SUV 4x4 with space inside for up to seven. Yet, since the fitment of an impressive 2.2-litre high-tech diesel engine and a mild facelift, this car has become a very attractive choice for growing families seeking an escape from the boredom of MPV motoring. Let's check it out. Hyundai has come a long way with an improvement in fortunes that can be traced back to an improvement in product that began about the time of the introduction of this second generation Santa Fe model in 2006. Now this was the first affordable SUV to blur the boundaries between cars in the uh, compact Freelander RAV4 SUV class and bigger models in the Discovery Shogun segment. Santa Fe buyers paid compact, relatively affordable prices, but got the kind of seven seat capacity that they'd previously needed a much larger SUV for. Not surprisingly, it's a concept that's since been copied by plenty of rivals, including Hyundai's partner Kia, whose Sorento's class-leading 2.2-litre diesel engine, this improved Santa Fe, now shares. There's a, a slightly fresher look too, but otherwise the package is much as before. So will that be enough in a sector full of freshly designed rivals, all claiming the affordable versatility that was once uniquely Santa Fe? Let's find out. Climb behind the wheel and there's the commanding driving position that SUV buyers like so much. Even better news comes when you twist the ignition key. Instead of the uh, tractor-like rumble that you used to have to expect from a large four-cylinder Korean-built diesel engine, there's a smooth thrum from a 2.2-litre diesel unit that develops a hugely impressive 194 brake horsepower. Now, maybe I need to put that into perspective. Much bigger six-cylinder family-sized 4x4s like, say, uh, Land Rover's 2.7 litre Discovery 4, uh, Toyota's 3 litre D4D Land Cruiser, or even Mitsubishi's 3.2 litre Shogun. They, they all struggle to match that and don't manage it. All of which means that this Hyundai is quicker off the mark than you might expect. Resta 60 is dispatched in 9.8 seconds on the way to a top speed of 118 miles an hour. But statistics like that are largely irrelevant in a car of this kind. What really matters in any kind of SUV is torque, and this car has plenty of that too. 422 newton meters to be exact, or, or more if you go for the automatic. Now that again is the kind of figure you'd expect from a big thirsty six-cylinder diesel, and it gives this car a useful 2,500 kilogram towing capacity. Around the twisty stuff, this Hyundai isn't as nimble as say a RAV4 or a Freelander. But then you'd expect that, this is a much bigger car. The uh, standard six-speed manual gearbox is a bit notchy too, and most buyers would probably be better off with the silky smooth six-speed automatic that I've got here, or also freshly introduced for this model. Overall, they're not really a choice for driving enthusiasts, but it is, perhaps more importantly, a car that you'd happily undertake long journeys in, thanks to uh, excellent refinement and an absorbent ride. The seven-seater version also gets uh, a useful self-leveling rear suspension to cope with the extra weight that it might have to carry. Off-road, you'll be in front-wheel drive until the clever electronic torque-on-demand four-wheel drive system detects slippage, at which point it'll transfer as much power and torque rearwards as it deems fit. Now this isn't really a heavy duty 4x4, but should you be uh, forgetting that and be unwise enough to go somewhere really boggy, there is the option of a, a, a four-wheel drive lock facility by the button down here, which basically equalizes the power going both front and rearwards, giving you a better chance of hauling yourself out. If you didn't know that this was an updated version of a car introduced back in 2006, then you might reasonably mistake it for an all new design. Now the credit for this is mainly down to the good work that the second generation Santa Fe stylists did in the first place. But the uh, refresh introduced at the back end of 2009 certainly gave the curvy lines a, a new lease of life. 
there's a smarter front end with a, a sleeker grille, a revised bumper and redesigned lights. Follow the rising waistline to the rear and you'll find that the lights are tweaked here too. The finishing touch to a shape seemingly more compact than a seven seat SUV ought to be. Actually, you don't have to have it with seven seats. The five seat version saves you a few hundred quid and gives you lots of extra luggage space both above and below the rear cargo floor. Nevertheless, nearly all Santa Fe buyers ignore it. After all, uh, being able to allow the kids to invite some friends home from school or invite granny on the usual Sunday afternoon jaunt to the garden centre is a nice option to have. If it's granny, she'll need to be an understanding sort. I've been calling this car a seven seater, but actually it's probably more accurate to call it a five plus two. For a start, you need to be fairly able-bodied just to get through to these rearmost seats. And once you are in place, the relatively restricted headroom means that only uh, quite small children will be really comfortable here. All right, so what about the center row? Well, legroom could be better. Fitting seven seats into a car of this size has to tell somewhere, but um, you can recline the seats for greater comfort and longer journeys. And there's quite adequate space here for two adults, although it might be a bit of a squash with three. Take a seat up front, and those familiar with the original version of this car will notice that the cabin materials have been modernized with the original dreaded faux wood inserts taking their rightful place on the skip. Instead, there's this carbon fiber type detailing which looks much more up to date. Soft touch plastics are noticeable by their absence, but it all feels solidly constructed and uh, the driving position has enough adjustability to suit all but the longest limb drivers. Luggage space should be quite sufficient, even for the most active families. Uh, that's provided, of course, that you're not using all seven seats. Quite. Still, you do get this shallow underfloor compartment, and if you fold this rearward uh, seat down, fold both of them down, you get 969 litres of space. And of course, there's the option of further folding the centre row down to increase that to 2,247 litres, uh, a completely flat load deck. List pricing suggests that you'll be paying somewhere between 22 and 24 and a half thousand pounds for your high-end D Santa Fe, depending on the variant that you choose, uh, with an 800 pound premium to go from a five to a seven seat derivative. Now this car's most obvious rival is Kia Sorento, which shares both its engine and its gearbox, but not its pricing. Though an entry-level Santa Fe is only a few hundred pounds less than the Kia at base level, the gap between the two models widens significantly as you progress up the trim range. What about other rivals? Well, you could save around 1,500 pounds and go for, say, a seven-seat Chevrolet Captiva, but that's a smaller car and it offers you about 40 brake horsepower less. What about a Citroen C-Crosser or a Peugeot 4007 then? Well, yes, you could consider one of those, but uh, the plushest high-end Santa Fe will be hundreds of pounds less than an entry-level version of either the Citroen or the Peugeot. And again, uh, both those French models will offer you 40 brake horsepower less. Whichever Santa Fe variant you choose, there's only one engine on offer. The impressive 194 brake horsepower 2.2 litre CRDI 16 valve diesel that I've been talking about. The choices that you do get centre mainly on trim level, the choice between five and seven seats, and your preference between uh, six speed manual or automatic transmission. Whichever version you choose, you should find it well equipped. All models coming with 17 inch alloy wheels, rear parking sensors, air conditioning, and an iPod compatible CD stereo with uh, aux and USB connectors. Safety wise, there's ESP stability control, ABS, front, side, and full length curtain airbags, and anti-whiplash front head restraints. Running costs are low for a vehicle of this Santa Fe size in the 4x4 class, and if you compare them to other uh, models capable of carrying seven people, then they look more competitive still. 
The engine incorporates a clever system that operates the alternator only when needed to save fuel and there's an optimum gear shift indicator to help you get close to the recommended combined uh, cycle fuel figures which now creep over 40 miles to the gallon. Emissions of CO2 are now quoted at 176 grams per kilometre. There are usefully long service intervals once every 20,000 miles and insurance on the 1 to 50 scale is either 29 or 30. Plus there's the reassurance of a five year warranty. This lightly capable high-end SUV was once a pioneer in providing seven-seat family versatility at relatively affordable compact 4x4 prices. Now it's an oft-forgotten but actually very informed choice in a sea of new arrivals and the reasons why are mainly to be found under the bonnet. No other model in the sector uh, can better this one's 2.2 litre diesel engine. As for the rest of the car, well it remains practical, well equipped and perhaps best of all very affordably priced compared to rivals. Which means that family buyers who check this model out wanting something with a little more attitude than a large MPV may once again begin to believe in Santa.